few minutes ago, I conferred the No Boundaries Award on the young entrepreneur and computer scientist, Javed Kareem, a man whose success at a young age has reshaped the world, bringing people together as never before, enhancing human contact, advancing human understanding. A man who embodies the future, whose vision and creativity will prove essential to solving the intricate problems confronting our global community. Applying transformational knowledge, he will doubtless discover and refine and share. Javed represents the best traits of Illinois alumni. His love of learning led him to the doctoral program at Stanford. His role as a leader is assured as he strives to become a professor, then shares his knowledge with the next generation of leaders. There's one word to describe Javed's accomplishments, one word to frame his potential. Cool. Please welcome our commencement speaker, Javed Kareem, class of 2004. Now remember, if I screw this up, don't upload it to YouTube. <laughs> President White, Chancellor Herman, members of the faculty, and most importantly, graduates. So most of you probably have a love-hate relationship with YouTube, right? Because on one hand, it has allowed you to spend endless nights watching tons of hilarious videos. On the other hand, that means you have wasted endless nights watching tons of hilarious videos. So let me take this opportunity to apologize for destroying your GPA. I am truly sorry. If it makes you feel better, I have probably wasted more time and watched more videos than anyone on YouTube. So you might wonder, having watched so many videos, which one is my favorite? My favorite video happens to be one of the first videos that was ever uploaded to YouTube. It's of a guy called Matt Harding. Matt is about 30 years old. He never graduated from college. And his job is to travel around the world and dance. It's a little hard to describe, so let's take a look. His video was then discovered by a bubblegum company. So now they are paying Matt to travel around the world and dance, promoting their bubblegum. Sounds like a good deal to me. You might have noticed that I'm a little younger than your average commencement speaker. That's both good and bad. The bad part is that I can't give you any great insights on the meaning of life because I'm still trying to figure that out myself. The good part, however, is that you and I are of the same generation. And that means that the opportunities that I had and the lessons that I learned, they still apply. 
and they apply as much to you now as they did to me just three years ago. What I'd like to do today is tell you a personal story that you can hopefully relate to. Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle Corporation, once said, I don't know of any place or any time where there aren't great possibilities. Now, we can all agree that these possibilities exist in hindsight, but how do you find them ahead of time? Well, you have to look for them, and you can do that simply by staying informed about your field. That's how I found my first great possibility, and that possibility was coming to the University of Illinois. It was back in Minnesota during high school that I found out that the world's first popular web browser had been developed at the University of Illinois. So I looked up Illinois on the map and found that it was fairly close to Minnesota. <laughs> I figured, why would I go anywhere else if the people who invented the first popular web browser are in my own backyard? It was a no-brainer. At that moment, I knew. I knew I would go to the University of Illinois. I wanted to join the innovators. So I mailed in my application and confidently waited for an acceptance letter to arrive. I did get a reply, but it wasn't quite what I expected. I was told I had been rejected from the computer science department. Apparently the program was full, and so I had been assigned to ceramics Now, I'm not saying there isn't a future in pottery, <laughs> but it's not what I signed up for. So what could I do? I sent back a letter asking if the decision could be reconsidered. I wrote, I only request that you make sure that none of the facts in my application have been overlooked. In return, I can promise you that I will be a highly motivated dedicated, and ambitious student at your fine school. It worked. <laughs> the admissions people changed their mind and let me begin fall semester in computer science. Being persistent, I learned, often pays off. And that was my first lesson. Fast forward to the beginning of my junior year. I received an offer to work at a startup company called PayPal, which was founded by an impressive team of Illinois engineers. It was at the height of the internet bubble, and PayPal was taking off big time. It seemed like a great opportunity, but I didn't know if I should abort my studies to join a risky startup. I deliberated for two weeks, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized. I had nothing to lose. So I decided to drop my classes mid-semester and move to California. Looking back, what I learned is the following. Take risks while you can. At PayPal, I felt once again that I was following in the footsteps of the Illinois innovators. It was a great opportunity to see up close how a group of talented people could overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. The experience taught me the importance of being true to yourself and to know exactly why you are doing things. But how do you know what it is that you should be doing? As I've said earlier, the best way to do this is to stay informed and to pay attention to what's going on around you. Most ideas don't come to you in a flash, but they stew in your brain for a while. And that's how it was with YouTube. Back in December of 2004, the Indian Ocean tsunami hit the west coast of Indonesia. It was the first natural disaster ever captured on cell phone video cameras, and the video clips quickly flooded the internet. But there was no good way to find these video clips. They were scattered all over the web. There is also no good way to share them. The clips were too big to email. And to play a clip, 
you first had to install the right video player. Try explaining to your parents how to install a video player. The time was right for a better solution. By February of 2005, two colleagues from PayPal and I began talking about building a video sharing website. We started working on the site on February 14th, Valentine's Day. That's one of those things about being a computer science major. Valentine's Day is just another day. <laughs> So why not start a new website? <laughs> Just two months later, on April 23rd, YouTube.com went live for the first time. It was hosted on a single web server, rented for $100 a month. What I learned over the next two years can all be summarized in two words. Stay flexible. Most people assume that YouTube was an immediate success. But that's not the whole story. In the beginning, we found that very few people came to our website. The product was so primitive that you couldn't even choose which videos you wanted to watch. Instead, the website picked the videos for you, randomly. And because there were so few videos, they were the same ones over and over again. We didn't even know how to describe our new product. To generate interest, we just said it was a new kind of dating site. Because let's face it, the one thing the internet needs more of is another dating site. We even had a slogan for it. Tune in, hook up. But there was one catch. We didn't have any videos. Realizing that videos of anything would be better than no videos, I populated our new dating site with videos of 747 airplanes taking off and landing. Dating? Airplanes? Who wants to date airplanes? The whole thing just didn't make any sense. We were so desperate for some actual dating videos, whatever that even means, that we turned to the website that any desperate person would turn to. Craigslist. <laughs> so, we spammed Craigslist in Los Angeles and Las Vegas, encouraging women to upload videos of themselves. In exchange, we offered to send them $20 for every video uploaded. It was a brilliant marketing scheme except for the fact that we didn't get a single reply. It turns out, it didn't even matter. Our users were already one step ahead of us. They began using YouTube to share videos of all kinds. Videos of their dogs, vacations, anything. We found this very interesting. We said, why don't we just let the users define what YouTube is all about? By June, we had completely revamped the website, making it more open and more general. It worked. Our little website was finally taking off. What I learned next may sound counterintuitive. Don't listen to so-called experts. When the time came to raise funding, initial reactions from investors were mixed. Some of them called the website cute, but they questioned its long-term value. They told us, get advice from experts on what to do with your website. That's when we realized that there were no experts. Because after all, if those experts really existed, how come they hadn't built this product? We realized that we were now the experts, and it was up to us to figure out how to proceed. Within 18 months, YouTube had a far greater impact than anyone, including us, could have predicted. People often ask me, what do I take away from this phenomenon? To me, it just shows that there are talented people everywhere. 
I think Time Magazine put it best when they chose you as the 2006 Person of the Year. As you leave this hall, remember that the world is waiting on you to create the next big opportunities. Given where you are today, you have already shown that you are well on your way. But before you leave, remember Dancing Matt from the video I showed you? He just returned from Africa, and he has a message for you. Hey everybody, I'm Matt Hardy from Where the Hell is Matt? I just wanted to say congratulations to the graduating class at the University of Illinois. You made it, you're done, you got your whole life ahead of you and all that. So as your last academic requirement before graduating, I want everyone, every last one of you, to get up out of your seats and dance badly, parents and faculty excluded. Don't worry about how you look or who's watching, just move your body in whatever random, gawky, ill-choreographed way it comes naturally. Okay, that's enough. Please stop dancing now. Once again, congratulations. Thank you, Java. That was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I, I suppose I should also tell you uh, and ask you to please uh, uh, help me congratulate Javed on his 28th birthday this Monday. <laughs>